Hello and welcome to our first installment of Mark's Madness for 2016. Alongside Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. Thank you so much for joining us. Mark, the holiday break filled with lots of basketball, which means me and you have a lot to talk about, right? <laughs> Correct. And you know, some people view the, uh, the first part of the season, December, let's say, as the preseason. Not very accurate because we've had some pretty important league games to take place, but now we're really into it in January and February. So let's begin right here in Lima with probably two of the best teams in our area yep. in Lima Senior and LCC, both undefeated on the season entering the new year. Spartans, of course, we can start with them. They're playing very, very well, and I think we can look at how well they're playing offensively. They put 88 points up per game, and that's an easy thing to do, Matt. Let's focus on what they're doing defensively. They're giving up about 57 points a game, and you go, well, that's a lot of points. They gave up a lot to Dayton Dunbar. That number would be down about 52 if you take the Dunbar game away. But if you look at the number of points they give up per possession, which I think is a key stat, they're doing very, very well. They, they beat their opponents by 31 points per game. That gives their opponents more scoring opportunities because they're scoring so fast, but their defensive average points per game Points per possession, really, really good right now. They've got size, they've got speed, they're athletic. We know the Division One talent on that yeah. team, led by Xavier Simpson, who's going to Michigan. Plus, you got Ruben Flowers, he'll play football at Pitt. I mean, there's talent all over the floor. And there's also talent all over the floor at Lima Central Catholic, Division One talent as well, led by Dantes Walton. They've got Trey Cobbs and Josh Dixon, and they're undefeated as well. So used a 16-0 run against Delphi St. John's to begin the game in the Holy War on Sunday. <laughs> and that's how they start most of their games, right? They really, they, they're keyed on what they do defensively as well. They don't give up very many points, but you're right. If you look at what's happened with Dantez Walton, which is what's happened with Trey Cobbs, they score a lot of points, but then throw in O'Connor and, and, and Tafflinger and those guys, they're averaging. Uh, Dixon, they've been in double figures in certain games as well. Williams had a double figure game, so they've had Four different players have all scored, so scored in double figures for them as well. A lot of balance to go along with it. And guys who are very experienced. These are guys who played in the state tournament as sophomores, and they're now into their senior year, so they're very experienced too. Quick note that I thought was cool from that St. John's LCC game. They wore throwback yeah. uniforms. You hopefully saw it on WOSN and St. Rose and the St. John's. And two players on LCC for... O'Connor and Williams, their grandfathers played for St. Rose, I think it was 1946, so that's cool that they got to wear those uniforms in that rivalry game. Yeah, it really is, you know, when you think about what they did and how they came out and prepared, I think it was probably really exciting for the kids to see and certainly for their parents and grandparents and some of their older fan base. I thought that was a really cool idea to do last Sunday. All right, before we close the book on the teams in Lima, I want to talk about Lima Senior and Finley. Finley also in the track, and Finley 6-2, and 3-1 and one in the league. Lima Senior is 4-0, oh, and they squared off over the break. And let's take a look at a couple of the plays that Lima Senior used in this game to build a big lead and get out in transition, and that's definitely a theme we've seen so far out of the Spartans. Well, what we have here is what looks like a basic base on out-of-bounds play. Here's the rebound, the quick movement in transition. Guy's out ready to go, and here's a really nice left-handed pass down inside and the finish. But if you look at it from the, the standpoint of, of uh, how Thomas finishes this, first of all, as we get the rebound right inside here, you notice immediately we've looked up the court, and you look at here's one, two, three, here's four, three players out ready to run in transition. But the key to the play is not just those three and the fact that they get out of the center of the floor, but right here is, on the right-hand side, is Flowers downside, and he got out quickly, made that fifth player in transition that makes it all work. Our second opportunity, here's the jump shot inside, here's the rebound and the push, and as you see right across court, Simpson's going to pull up in transition with two rebounders and two more coming, so they're ready to defend and ready to score as well as rebound the basketball. This looks like a side out of bounds play that's going to score, the defense reacts, and then once again out in transition and all the way to the rim. And again, let's take a look at that particular play as, as Simpson finishes in transition there. But it looks like right here we've got a guy coming open off the sideline out of bounds play. But instead, as you see how the defense reacts, there's one, two, three defenders here to react very quickly to the open score. The shot gets up, it gets blocked, and we go in transition quickly. And what's happened here is because we've made perimeter jump shots before, here's a shooter and here's a shooter over here. It opens the middle of the floor up for the difficult shot inside, but Wilson finishes off glass. The defense not collapsed inside to protect. And then Stafford's going to get a steal. Got his long arms out right here in the passing lane, knocks it down, scores and gets fouled. Defense sets up a basket there for the Spartans. 
They can beat you in a lot of ways. Lima Senior will play LCC in the Battle for the Lima Cup, their annual meeting, yep. January 26th. We'll have it on WOSN. Do you think both teams will be undefeated heading into that matchup? Each team have a real challenge before they can get to that. And obviously, both teams could be upset at some point along the way. The Spartans have to play Toledo St. John's right before that. LCC has to play a good Versailles team right before that. So they each have challenges, but there's a good chance that they'll be undefeated when they get to that matchup. All right, good stuff, Mark. Moving on now to the Northwest Conference, which overall top to bottom, I would have to say oh. the best conference in our area this boys basketball season with all nine teams at least 500 or better. And they're led by Lincoln View, who might be the biggest surprise of the year. Well, Matt, I think we knew that Lincoln View was going to be talented and good, but they certainly have exceeded some expectations kind of being undefeated right now. Of course, the big win over Spencerville early in the year gave them an early league start. And you look at them and you go, okay, their, their scoring is so balanced. They have four players averaging between about 12 points and 10 points. But then in addition to that, Leaf, the last four games, he's also averaging double figures. So over the last uh, month or so, or last week or so, they've got five different players averaging in double figures. They're so hard to guard. They're, they spread the floor out. They can go inside and score as well. But the balance has been the key to them. You mentioned undefeated 10-0. They're 2-0 in the league. Crestview is also 2-0 in the league. They just suffered their first loss of the season against Miller City on December the 29th. Uh, to, to me, Matt, that's one of those Christmas game situations. That everybody gets out of routine at Christmas time. Uh, you know, you eat at different schedules, you eat too much, you sleep at the wrong times, practice schedules are different, and you never know quite what you're going to expect out of players. But for Crestview to lose that particular game, a little bit of a surprise, but not necessarily when you consider the Christmas time atmosphere that sometimes happens around programs. And then we've got Bluffton at 1-0. They're the only other unbeaten team in the league. But again, only a couple of league games so far, especially right. when we lost those Friday nights to the holidays. So we'll make up a bunch here in January and February. And then Spencerville, Jefferson, Paulding in the next three spots. And, you know, the league, just any of those teams, I could still see winning the league. So we're, we're, how do we figure this all out? Uh, that, that's a really good thing to look at. You know, start looking at who you play at home, who you play away, what's going to happen there. Bluffton's got four guys averaging in double figures. Rumor was just the MVP of their tournament that they played over the holidays. So they're playing very, very well. Uh, Jefferson, you know, you look at what Stockwell and what uh, Smith are doing. They're both averaging in double figures. Stockwell around 16 a game. Smith closer to 30. Gergens has made some threes for them lately, so they're very dangerous. They've got some league losses, but don't count out Jefferson as being a team that can just jump up and surprise you at any particular point in time and get a win. And likewise, Ada, they've won three in a row. Souter scoring points for them. So the league has so many good teams and good players right now that where we're going to go with that, it's going to be like a, a big game or two every week in their conference. Yeah. I remember us talking about that before the break, and, and we're definitely looking forward to these upcoming NWC games. The same way that we're looking forward to the WBL games, because mm -hmm. OG still sitting atop the league 2-0. and There's three teams 2-0 and in the league right now, Defiance, OG, and Wapak. But OG's 9-1 and overall. That's why I have them as my slight favorite with their only loss coming to LCC. You agree? Yeah, I would think that's probably true. Right now they are the favorites, but I don't think it's one of those prohibitive favorite teams. Well, the interesting thing I think about OG is they've had five different players lead them in scoring in a particular game. So, you know, yeah. how do you match up? Who do you who do you look at as your guy? We're we going to try to take out or stop in a particular situation because they're so balanced. And of course, with their tradition, with their fan base, and they probably are the favorites right now. But Defiance will have a lot to say with that. I think Wapak's playing well as well. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how those two teams stack up against OG. And then Shawnee's won five in a row. You got to mention Jaden O'Neill. He went over a thousand points right. in his career over the break and. That's a team that, you know, Coach Tripwit, they have they really seem to be hitting their stride midseason, which, which is a good thing. Well, Matt, I think one of the keys with Shawnee is they've gotten more scoring now and more balanced scoring than just getting points out of Jaden O'Neill. Now, yes, he's getting 20-plus points per game, but McDonald's average in double figures the last five games. Casey's average in double figures the last five games. So they're getting scoring from other positions on the floor. Then you throw in a bunch of guys like Wilkerson who get you six or eight points per basketball game, and all of a sudden you've got a team that can really, really score. That's what's really made the difference for them. If you look at their wins and losses, Shawnee scores more than 70 points per game in their seven wins. In their three losses, they're averaging about 45 points per game. Now, part of that was a kind of a clunker game against LCC in week two, but they don't score nearly as much when they lose as when they win. And the real key is, can you hold them down defensively? Absolutely. And speaking of milestones, Jaden O'Neill, 1,000 career points. We had Madison Stolle, the LCC girls team, just a junior. She went right. over 1,000 career points over the break. And Ethan Linder, 
on Wayne Trace, another 1,000-point score. So a lot, a lot of milestones over the break. We'll have to see that. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think some people say, well, the 1,000 points doesn't mean as much as it used to. And in a way, that's correct because a lot more players play as freshmen. We're playing 22 games now as opposed to maybe 18 or 20 that we used to play in years past. But that is still quite an accomplishment when you're able to put 1,000 points on the board in your career. All right, let's move on to the BBC now, Mark. And Van Buren, unbeaten, 6-0, and 3-0 and in the league. The Knights have a lot of athletes from their football team, right. which we know the success that they've had the last two seasons on this basketball team. They do. The real key for them is the scoring they've been getting out of Braxton Fasson. Um, you know, he's averaging, what, uh, 22.7 points per game. Their team averages over 75 points per game. So Mark Bishop's got his team in a real offensive mode, led by Fasson, and they really get out and go in transition. They do a lot of very positive things. They have a huge game this weekend, though. Against Liberty Benton. Correct. And Liberty Benton's 4-0 in the league, so something's going to give here in the BBC. We're going to have a team with at least one week yeah. loss and one still unbeaten. And, and when you look at, at what's going on with Liberty Benton, they're more of a defensive-oriented team. They give up something down in the 50s. They can score as well. Inside game with Kraft, of course, can step out to the three-point line too, but we think of him more as being a 6-6 player and scoring down inside. Master Lasko is as good a point guard as there is around, taking the ball to the basket. May's a good three-point shooter, so they've got three areas of the floor that they can cover offensively. And I had a coach tell me the other day, don't leave out Osborne. He always seems to do something good for his team, kind of unnoticed. He gets a big rebound, he gets a score here, he makes a couple of free throws there, gets a defensive stop. And don't forget about him. He might be overshadowed by what the other three players do. Interesting to see how the coaches are preparing for yes, those teams. And don't forget about that guy don't because we see what he does on the <laughs> That's court. That's right. And coaches, of course, with all the video that they can get now, and they're, they're able to not just visually scout a team once in a while, but get all this video on teams, they know who to look at from teams as well. Without a doubt. And then in the BBC as well, we've got Macomb, 5-1 and one overall. Yep. They, they look dangerous. Lipsick won three in a row. Brown's averaging over 18 points per game for Lipsick. He's their main scorer. They get a lot of balance around him as well. I think we've had three or four different players in double figures every game for Macomb. Nobody really kind of stands out offensively. Um, you get three players this game, a different three the next game. So they're kind of uh, all over the place when it comes to scoring. But Macomb has some athletes as well. Northwest Central Conference is up next as we continue to break down yeah. all of the leagues and Commodores lost to Shawnee and Wapak back to back in December, but they still sit atop the league. They're 2 and 0 in the NWCC. 8-2 overall with those two losses I just mentioned. Yeah, I would think, Matt, congratulations to the Commodores to go out and schedule up, you know, to go play teams like Shawnee and Wapak. And yes, they might have been losses. The Shawnee game was a three-point game. Wapak was like nine or something like that. But they went out and scheduled up, and they challenged their players, and that only makes them better. We've talked in every one of our shows about how perimeter-oriented they are with Lane Harvey and, and Gardner and Monfort and how they can score so much on the perimeter. Uh, they're going to get a guy uh, off their uh, eligibility sheet soon. Uh, Upshaw, I think, is his name. Or Upshaw, yeah, I think that's his name. He's going to be eligible soon, give him some 6'4 size inside. So, you know, we'll see what happens with them, but certainly they are the favorites in their conference right now. And when I say back-to-back to, -back to Shawnee yep. Wapak, it actually was back-to-back -back nights. So, they, yep. you know, talk about playing up, and then you've got, you're in the holiday break, and then you're playing two games in a row back-to-back. -back. So, no shame in, in those losses. And now Ridgemont is also 2-0 and in the league. They're 6-4 and overall. And then you've got four teams at 1-1, one one, Temple, Riverside, Layman, and Waynesfield Goshen. So, how do you see this league playing out? Is it too early to tell as well? It, it really is. I think it, I, the team I want to see, and I get a chance to cover them on Friday night as Temple Christian. Yeah. They shoot the three ball so well. I think they made 37 three-point field goals. They've got a little three-point counter in their gym at uh, yeah. the covered wagon too. So it, it's, it's just a, uh, and of course in their gym it's got that special advantage that it seems like the home court is really in play there. And that's where Perry has to go. They have to play at Temple Christian. Temple Christian has guard play just like Perry does. So that, that's their next big challenge in their league. I'm anxious to see how Temple Christian plays on Friday night against Hard Northern. That will be the challenge game, but right now the Perry Commodore is playing so well, you've got to think of them as the favorites. All right, moving right along to the MAC Versailles. 8 1 overall, 3 0 in the league. They lost to Chaminade Julian on December 30th. Yeah, Versailles, of course, Arns has picked up the scoring from when his brother graduated a, a year ago. Justin's having just a fine year for them. And they get good balance from everybody else on the floor. Um, they've already played three conference games, and they're 3-0 in a conference. Everybody else has played one and perhaps two. 
So, you know, they've beaten New Bremen, they've beaten New Knoxville, they've beaten Parkway, teams that are probably down near the bottom half of the schedule by the time they're done with it. But they have some challenges coming up, including this week with St. Henry, a huge game for the Redskins this week. St. Henry's been playing well, and then you've also got Fort Recovery, Marion Local, and Coldwater all 1-0 in the league. And, of course, that they all those are the three football state yep. football schools, so they yep. had their late start. If, if I had to pick one out of that hat, I would look at Fort Recovery. I thought that the Christmas break came at a great time for them. Um, you know, they played all those football games, state championship. They rushed into basketball season. I thought it was a great time for them to regroup and get organized. I would bet Fort Recovery will be in the mix before it's all over. Yeah, I've been impressed with what I've seen out of them so far as well. All right, we're almost out of time here, so let's finish up with the Shelby County League and the PCL. Jackson Center and Rushi, 5-1 and one in the league. Yep. A lot more league games already taking place in the Shelby County League, as we talked about before the break. And the Tigers just suffered their first loss of the season to Anna on Saturday. Yeah, that's a, a really interesting conference. Those are probably the three best teams in the conference. And, of course, they're going to match up later on. The Jackson Center has already beaten Rushi by three. They play later on. That'll be at Rushi. That's probably the next big contest. And, of course, Anna is always going to be somewhere around the mix as well. And then finish up with the PCL. We've got Grove at 4-3, and three, Collada at 5-5 five and five overall. They're both Unbeaten in the league at 1-0. Again, very few league games played. But Collada has lost four of their last five. We'd like to see them rebound a little bit. And any other teams you're looking at in the Putnam County League? Well, I think that conference is wide open as it gets right now with the teams that are at the top. And you mentioned the fact that Clyde had lost, but losses, but in their win in there was over Spencerville. Right. So they got That's a good big win, win in yeah. there as well. And, and I just think that conference is going to be just a wide open shootout down towards the end. There'll be three or four teams at the top of that conference. So what games are you looking forward to this weekend? Well, I've already mentioned the fact that I want to see a Temple Christian Hard Northern because I want to see those guys play. I want to see Temple Christian play in their home environment. Hard Northern's gotten better. They want to upset a game in the uh, Parkway tournament. They were in over the break. As they won a game there. Hard Northern's gotten better. They had a lot of young guys a year ago that got a year's experience. So I'm looking forward to see how they play. And just because I'm selfish, we get to do Perry and Parkway. Uh, on Saturday night, and I want to see Perry live. I've seen their highlights. I've seen some other stuff with them. I want to see Perry live and watch those guys play. Now, from just a standpoint, we got to look at Liberty Benton and, and, yeah. and what's going to happen with game. them and, and Van Buren this weekend for big games in the conference. And then you mentioned also St. Henry Versailles. That should be St. a good Henry one Versailles, as well. There's a game. St. Henry's got to get a win. They've already got league losses. They need a win right now to get this one. And there'll be a bunch more others. We'll have highlights on the Sports Report as the Sports Report makes its 2016 debut on Thursday. And then, of course, we'll be back Friday and Saturday. And then here's your rebroadcast schedule. It begins Wednesday, 7 p.m. with Lormy versus Versailles Boys, immediately followed by Bath versus Ottoville Girls. Then Friday at 10.30 on WOSN, Liberty Benton versus Van Buren Boys. Looking forward to that BVC matchup. And then at 10.44 on WTLW, Friday night following the Sports Report, Defiance versus Bath Boys, interesting one in the WBO. Saturday, a lot of games. 7 p.m. it begins with Harden Northern versus Temple Christian Boys. Saturday, 8.30, Crestview versus Delphus Jefferson Boys. Saturday, 10.30, WOSN, Ottawa Glandor versus Finley Boys. Saturday, 10.30, WTLW, Lipsick versus Grove Boys. And the reason I just said boys so many times in a row is because Sunday at 5.30, we've got Lipsick versus Grove Girls. Grove just handed Ottoville their second loss of the season on the girls' side, so that should be a good one between Lipsick and Grove in the PCL. Sunday at 7 p.m., Par Perry versus Parkway Boys. You talked about that one, Mark. Sunday, 8.30 p.m., Marion Local versus Van Wert Boys. And finally, Monday at 8 p.m., the St. Louis River Sharks versus the Lima Express season opener. We're proud to bring that to you on WOSN. So a full slate of basketball as we're ready to go here in 2016. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks to you, Mark Shine, and we'll see you next week.